Imagine getting the benefits of exercise just by tapping into your body's natural processes. Today we're talking about AMPK, often called exercise in a pill. Find out how this incredible enzyme works to find to keep you healthy and strong. Hi everyone, welcome back to our How Not to Age book club. Welcome, welcome. Today we'll be starting the dive into the various contenders of scientific pathways that most impacts our cellular aging processes, starting with AMPK, a tiny but mighty enzyme that plays a pretty big role in our health, if you've read um, some of Dr. Gerger's other works. So it, beyond the actual sciencey part of literally adenosine monophosphate kinase, just think of AMPK as kind of a fuel gauge in your body. So when it senses that you're running low on energy, it switches your body from burning from storing fat to burning it for energy. That's pretty cool, right? But here's the exciting part. AMPK doesn't just help with weight control. It's actually kind of like a superhero as well that can actually help slow down aging. And as we get older, science scientific studies have shown that AMPK levels actually drop, and that's when aging starts to speed up. So AMPK even helps with a process called autophagy or autophagy. I never know how to pronounce things sometimes. You guys know what I'm trying to say. So it's akin to a recycling program for your cells. It cleans up damaged parts. It eats it up, gets rid of it so that you don't have all the toxic waste and things that you don't need anymore. Therefore, hoping with this, how we're understanding it, it's making you then feel younger and healthier. Scientists are pretty intrigued by AMPK because it seems to be a key player in controlling aging. And when they boost AMPK in experiments, animals live longer, sometimes up to 38% longer. And here's a fun fact. Do you know that feeling you get after exercise? Well, that's AMPK at work. It makes your muscles burn fat and become stronger. So it's kind of like exercise in a pill. In fact, AMPK is found to work so effectively that it is the basis of one of the best-selling drugs in the United States. Can you take a guess what drug it is? Do, 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 do. Anyways, insert uh, Jeopardy noise here. Have you heard of metformin? It's a common drug for diabetes, and it also acts by activating AMPK. Some people think it could help us live longer, but like all things, it has pros and cons. Listen up before you start popping metfor metformin for fun. Actually, really, don't, don't, do, don't do that. Because while it was hypothesized that diabetics on metformin may actually benefit from a longer lifespan than non-diabetics not on metformin, this was discovered to be false via the TAME trials. So for now, instead of trying to pop pills that might be better, let's actually focus on some more natural ways to boost AMPK. Studies have shown that foods like barberries, black cumin seeds, and hibiscus tea to be very powerful AMPK activators. And if this sounds familiar to you, that's because Dr. Greger has an entire chapter dedicated to it, to amping AMPK as it's called, in How Not to Diet. In fact, I want to highlight black cumin, which was also discussed thoroughly in How Not to Diet, as a very, very powerful and affordable plant product. Black cumin is a well-established is well established in the medical literatures already, and it has been found in systematic reviews as well as randomized uh, randomized control trials to actually significantly improve your weight loss, cholesterol, triglycerides, blood sugar, blood sugar control, or me, blood sugar, and C-reactive protein, and just a slew of inflammatory conditions. And someone with chronic pain like I do, that's actually why I start paying attention to black human because I want to reduce my infl inflammatory markers as well as inflammation in my body. So black human seeds, they're kind of like nature's superheroes for your health, an odd distinctive flavor with a texture of life-saving benefits. Okay, so technically I do want to add both hibiscus and barberries were also discussed extensively as well. I mean, I'm not a big fan of hibiscus flavor and I haven't been able to locate barberries in stores here in, in Southern California. And I was also just uh, a little distracted by uh, berberine, I believe, supplements. I shouldn't have, I really shouldn't have. But both of them are also incredible and have been shown to improve the vast array of conditions that we discussed earlier in both how not to die and diet. So I guess I'll give them a try again. So my silly food preferences aside, there are two other food groups also discussed in how not to diet to, okay, I'm not sponsored. I promise I'm not sponsored yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, actually though, no, I'm not sponsored. I just really love his books and science and I highly recommend reading the rest of his books besides how not to age in order to get a full spectrum understanding of these powerful food ingredients. 
So as I was saying, uh, the two other food groups can also naturally induce AMPK activation in our body. One's top down and the other is from bottom up. Can you take a guess what they are? It's vinegar and fiber. When metabolizing vinegar, we get a natural boost in AMPK and all of its beneficial effects in the body, including artery function, decreasing blood cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So while its effect on longevity in humans have not been tested, studies have shown vinegar intake to be associated with reduced risk of, uh, I think, death and fatal heart attacks, which is pretty good for me. So that's, that's good enough for me to try out and try to include more vinegar in my diet. I already do. I cook a lot. And uh, if you've read some uh, cookbooks, uh, you always need a little bit of acid to make the flavors just right. <clears throat> so other on the other hand, just kidding, I'm going to take a sip first because I talk too fast. I was saying... <clears throat> Fiber, on the other hand, is fermented into organic acids in our gut, therefore also then triggering AMPK activation. So for those who are new to fiber, fiber can be found throughout the ant, throughout the plant kingdom, not animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, and it is most concentrated in legumes and whole grains. Legumes are the beans, the split peas, chickpeas, lentils, all the, all the beans, 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 and, <laughs> sorry, I really like beans, and whole grains are like the wheat berries, um, oatmeal, uh, rye berries, barley, etc. And actually a fun game for us, I kind of want to incorporate this to make my videos a little bit more, react in, little bit more interactive and fun. I want to say that the RDA of fiber is actually only 30 grams a day. But do you know what that looks like? I'm going to include some three photos of of three photos of uh, different amounts of fiber. And I'm curious if you want to comment below or tweet me or DM me which is closest to 30 grams of fiber. Watch until the end to find out which is the correct answer. So there you have it, everybody, the incredible world of AMPK. It's a tiny enzyme with a big, big potential for our health and longevity. All right, so on top of that, I do have quite a few reflections I would love to share with you. Seven, actually seven this time. I know I, I messed up with counting last time, but actually seven this time. And as per usual, I welcome any thoughts, any re any of your commentaries or any commentary on my reflections, as always, comment below or DM me or tweet me anything. So let's move on. Number one, uh, I like to say that reflecting on AMPK, especially given um, learning about its role in diet and death as well as aging, I'm curious, or it's not, I'm not curious, it's clear that the enzyme plays a pretty pivotal role in regulating our body's energy balance, offering pretty intriguing possibilities for addressing additional metabolic disorders. I'd love to talk about that more next time. And number two, I'd like to say that AMPK's evolutionary role, evolutionary roots in survival during times of scarcity really prompts us to question, really, how, how does this ancient mechanism relate to the health challenges that we are facing now in an abundance-driven lifestyle? Number three, uh, in the world of AMPK activation through drugs like metformin, the diabetes drug we mentioned earlier, uh, it, it's true that the world is a complex one, and it's therefore it's very essential to carefully weigh the potential risks and benefits, particularly when considering long-term usage. That's, I have many thoughts, and we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. And number four. Four, uh, going beyond its role in weight loss, AMPK's influence on aging and cellular rejuvenation overall longevity sparks a broader conversation about its implications for our health. You know, what are additional things we're doing besides taking on saturated fats that's actually impacting our AMPK, that's actually killing us, like actually aging us, right? So it's, well, that's kind of on me because I think I would like to go online and find more papers just to get a broader understanding beyond what Dr. Gur has shared so far. And number six, I always lose count at six. Uh, number, no, it's five, number five, number five. Ethical considerations are really on my mind when I contemplate the development and marketing of AMPK activators as potential anti-aging drugs. So it really does also raise some questions about equity and accessibility. As, in, as you can tell, like first world countries, us having all these clinics and like for anti-aging, for dermatology, for skin, facelifts, and even melting away your fat. I don't even know all the things that are out there. You know, how is this going to be transformed as we develop more anti-aging drugs and medicine and lifestyle changes? Number six, actually number six this time, uh, the connection between diet and PK activation, as well as the prevention of age-related diseases, it truly underscores the profound impact dietary choices can have on 
promoting healthy aging. And that's that's pretty much the premise of the entire book, of Dr. Greger's, all of his books in, in his career. So I, I truly hope, I think this is going to be a reflection that's going to come up on pretty much every section. It's just the profound impact dietary choices can have on promoting healthy aging. Number seven, uh, in the realm of personalized medicine, AMPK's role takes on new significance as we explore the potential for tailored interventions based on an individual's unique genetic and metabolic profiles. So it also opens up exciting avenues for precision health. And I know that's not what we normally talk about here, but I do think it's very exciting because as I said earlier, or in my last video, I'm not against, I, I, I'm not against innovation. Right. So I think recognizing even more targets for probable avenues of, of, of improving our health, I think that is still very exciting because clearly it was significant enough that it got banned in Tour de France. Right. So I think that's exciting. That's that's exciting. I'm not saying I'm going to I'm going to become a druggie, but it's really exciting. Well, maybe I might start popping barberries every day. So, OK. I didn't say that on camera. Okay, so those are kind of my reflections, but let's move on to our discussion questions. Okay, I know my reflections also sound like questions because I, I think I'm trained to always ask questions. <laughs> so I'm sorry if everything I say ends the question mark, but I think that's, that's, that's kind of fun. So I do have seven questions for you. Um, <clears throat> These seven questions, I kind of toned them down a bit bit because I felt like last time it was very somewhere ethical, somewhere questions about, I don't know, like telling you to, to consider things that you might not have thought about. So here I'm going to try and ask some, throw you some softballs. Okay, we're throwing some softballs, throwing some easy balls just to see if you actually uh, paid attention to your reading or if you're paying attention to what I said or just to encourage deeper thought and deeper reflection or deeper discussion. So as per usual, uh, feel free to comment below or DM me, tweet me, like contact me, anything. Like I would love to hear from you as well. So question number one, uh, question number one, I'm curious, how does AMPK or AMP uh, activated protein kinase a function as an energy sensor? And what role does it play in regulating metabolism and weight control? That's softball number one, come on. You guys all know the answer. Question number two, uh, what are the three main criteria? This was interesting because it trains you this to think like a scientist, you know, what role does, or sorry, <clears throat> I don't know why I went back to role. What are the three main criteria that longevity researchers use to establish uh, an aging potential or sorry, aging pathway? And how does AMPK fit into these criteria? Question number three, in what ways can AMPK activation be beneficial uh, to longevity? And how does it relate to processes like autophagy, autophagy and mitochondrial function? A powerhouse of the cell, everybody, you know, all know this. Number four, um, <clears throat> I would like you to tell me about the potential of AMPK activators as a dietary restriction mimetics and tell me about what is their role in anti-aging intervention? Because I know we talk a lot about positive and negative regulators and or feedback. So just to kind of wrap your head around it, tell me about that one. <clears throat> Number five, how does exercise influence AMPK activation? And really, what is its impact? I, we talked about it so many times, but tell me, tell me. I'm, I'm ready for you to tell me. Uh, what is its impact on weight loss and mitochondrial biogenesis? And number six, <clears throat> I would like you to tell me uh, what is... Okay, I need to drink some tea. I'm talking way too much. Oh, no, these don't have barberries. These have goji berries. <clears throat> okay, back to number six. Uh, I would like to explore the concept of exercise in a pill. And what are, so what are the implications on, of AMPK activating drugs on physical activity and health? Number seven, last but not least, what are some other natural sources of AMPK activators and how can dietary choices impact AMPK activation and overall health? We talked about a few. I mean, don't tell me the ones I told you. I'm curious if, if there are others out there that you know of or if you'd like to look it up or try looking it up and see if there are many out there. I, I, I'm pretty sure there are just because AMPK has been very widely studied now. So I'm curious, what are your favorite sources of AMPK or have you noticed that you do take a lot of AMPK in your dietary choices that you're just now finding out about? I would love to know because I would love to get more AMPK activation in my body. So those are my 
reflections as well as discussion questions for this book club session. Thank you so much for joining everyone. I really look forward to our next session. So uh, next session, we will be, we're going one session, one section per book club now, just because it's too much to film per video. So the next section, we will be covering cellular senescence. I'm excited for that one. Cellular senescence. That's where we're going next, guys. See you next time, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I can't wait to learn more about how not to age with you. Cheers, everybody.